Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Simmons Comics, and we are here to talk about what is trending in the comic book community. That's right. This is the three up, three down. We're going to give you three up and three down trends happening this week. But Jack, how's your week so far? Oh, busy so far, but that's that's what's usual at this point, right? We got a very Marvel heavy list uh, on both sides. But as always, buying opportunity on the down. But let's start with talking about what's trending upward. Yeah, we're getting to what's up right now. We are going to talk about Black Panther. A lot of news about Black Panther. Of course, the sad news that goes with it with the loss of Chadwick Boseman. But either way, there's some good news and some good stuff out there that's making this trend, right? Well, yeah. I mean, of course, you have all the speculation surrounding Black Panther, too, and, and what the death of um, Chadwick Boseman does. But honestly, I, that's not even really my focus. That's more of the property. I'm talking about the character of Black Panther. One thing that really does my heart good, Brian, and I'm glad we get to start off with this, um, is, you know, we talk a lot about speculation um, and investing in comics. I, I certainly understand, especially if you're going to spend the type of money that you have to spend to get these kinds of keys. We're talking, of course, about, you know, Fantastic Four, 52, or um, a Black Panther number one at this point, in any sort of nice grade. Uh, you know, you're talking about major money. So you want to preserve your investment. And I'm very happy to see that with the death of Chad with Bozeman, we haven't seen people say dumping these books onto the market. These books aren't going down. They're actually setting record highs, both, both the first appearance and the Jack Kirby number one issue. Um, both graded and raw sales have been trending upwards. And it really tells you, I think, the impact that Chadwick Boseman had on the entire pop culture, um, the zeitgeist in general, just people are in are very excited about Black Panther. Um, and I think it goes to really one of the things that we talk about, classic is classic. Um, and especially for your collection, right? Uh, if you're looking really long term, um, things that are once great will always be great. Um, and Black Panther, I think, really fits that mold. And I, I was worried with the death of Chadwick that we would see kind of people move beyond T'Challa. Um, and some of these prices would start to drop. I'm very glad to see them moving upwards, um, and as they should. And, and, and this is a character that can and will live on forever. Yeah, one of the good things also is, I mean, Black Panther was one of my favorite Marvel films. But if you have the DVD, have the Blu-ray, if you got those bonus features, there's an awesome little featurette on there where they got a bunch of people in the room, director, and they're talking about the whole history of Black Panther. Great conversation. It's one worth checking out. But the next one we're talking about on the three up this week, getting over to that symbiote family. We are talking about Void, Void Night, right? Right. So... This is popping off multiple issues because you may remember when we talked about Century being on the upside just a few weeks ago. And that was from a Ryan Stegman tweet where um, he referenced uh, Century having to do with King and Black and that got everybody excited. And now um, all those comic detectives out there have really kind of honed in on Void and the Void Knight and the Jeff Lemire run from Century. That, uh, that century, I, I believe it's four and five um, from that Jeff Lemire run have started to heat up to over $20 an issue. You're also seeing um, the Silver Surfer Black number two from the Donny Cates run heat up to about $20. Uh, the first, that's the first appearance of the Void Knight and then the Void um, uh, kind of... Uh, Going into the century, uh, that them um, uh, kind of just like a symbiote. So uh, with those two issues, with those two or two sets of issues, really, you're talking about three issues popping at the same time. It shows that people are really interested in this. This is, We talked about century a couple weeks ago, and now we're talking about these. This hasn't died. This is the tweet that won't die. Um, people are very excited for King of Black. And I don't think this is going to be like the last property that we're talking about. Uh, relating to King and Black. It just shows you, it's in my mind, that's what I take away from it, Brian, is that the general interest in King and Black and that speculators are, and collectors are going to be looking for these new appearances, these first appearances, and undervalued previous first appearances. Moving into the last one on the three up portion of the show, and I think this is because it's supposed to make an appearance in Cobra Kai number season number three, 
But we're going to talk about we're talking about Ninja Spawn. It's in Cobra Kai number, season three, right? That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Everything is Cobra Kai these days, though. Um, but no, of course, we're talking about Spawn from Todd McFarlane. Ninja Spawn debuted as a uh, action figure character. Um, this was uh, a, you know, a, a long-standing popular cult version who had never made his way to the comics. Um, in issue 297, he cameoed uh, and kind of really didn't get a ton of attention upon that issue's release. But with this week's release of issue 310, the Todd McFarlane Ninja Spawn variant, uh, the incentive black and white McFarlane Ninja Spawn variant, the popularity that those have seen, uh, it has reignited not just those issues, but the the previous Spawn 297 issue, as well as the previous action figure sales. So there's a lot of, this is a cult popular character, but we're seeing as it's getting exposed to a larger Spawn fan base and a general comic collecting public, that this is another version of Spawn that they're getting really behind. And it really, really makes me sit there and watch this and go, man, people, people were really on Gunslinger Spawn. Now they're jumping all over Ninja Spawn. There isn't like a Spawn into the Spawnverse movie or comic or crossover waiting to happen because McFarlane's got some of these uh, side characters hot right now. So there's the three up portion and we know what goes up must come down. So we're going to get into the three down, which we often say presents some buying opportunities. But that first downward trend we're talking about right now might surprise some people, but we're going to talk about Black Winter. Yeah, well, you know, I'm a big long-term fan. Brown, I know you are as well. Um, but sometimes it pays to be quick. So Black Winter was the hottest thing going. It was what everybody was talking about. Whatever Cates is doing at the moment, we just talked about Void and Void Night. Um, and, you know, we're going to be talking about King and Black. Whatever he's doing currently is the thing to be talked about. Um, having said that, because of the way Black Winter kind of wrapped up, he moved on. Uh, it made speculators immediately jump off. So we're seeing price crashes going on with, uh, you know, Thor 5, Thor 4. Um, these issues are seeing demand decreases as well as just overall uh, price sale decreases. Um, now, that does not mean a thing. The reality is that I've heard people talk about this. Black Winter could, could and probably will be back, and we probably will see um, – uh, it, it more from this storyline. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, we talk about this. Collectors, speculators, investors, they move on to the next thing. Um, they don't tend to stick around and uh, linger too long on one topic. And w once it's not the topic of the day, they move on. And they've moved on seemingly from Black Winter. So let us know in the comment section how you feel about Black Winter. This is one I'm really curious about. It was brought to my attention. I was not aware of some of the drastic price decreases over the last few, few weeks. So um, let us know how you guys feel about that in the comment section. Yeah, we got a little bit of winter felt first with winter was coming, winter came. Now we get a little bit of gray joy, right? What is dead may never die. These references mean nothing to you, Jack, because you don't watch Game of Thrones. But <laughs> we are moving into the next downward trend. And this keeps with that trend where we're saying what was up must come down. This is still one of my favorite favorite series to read right now and we're talking about daredevil and maybe that's the only reason why we're talking about it down brian is because it had come up so high it had gotten to a point where we were starting to expect sadarcy's daredevil run to hit um and kind of a a every week uh every release bolo list kind of uh, uh book where if it didn't hit the bolo list, we were starting to get comments saying, you know, how come it's not hitting the bolo list? And then we'd start to see posts about it on social media to get back on the bolo list. Um, but the last arc didn't really deliver sort of any buzz. Um, we're coming into a new arc with Matt Murdock in jail. And I want to give a shout out to Mel V and the Junk Drunken Chat. Uh, Sun preview show, which uh, I got a chance to watch some of their like <laughs> four hour FOC show. Um, but I, I, it, in getting to watch some of it, they were very negative about the upcoming um, Daredevil arc. Uh, and it was interesting for me as a, like you, Brian, you got me really into this run. 
did sit and see the perspective of somebody else. This was four or five guys. Brian McClay from Tales from the Flip Side was one of them. And they were talking about they just didn't want to see Matt Murdock in jail anymore. Um, you know, and and that's the storyline they're going with. And I it, I hadn't thought about it when I initially saw the solicit, but it kind of was a point that stuck in my head. It's true. I have seen that now several times. Um, and what I like about Zdarsky's run and when he's really hitting this run, for me, a home run in this run is when he is doing things that we haven't seen, things that feel very different. So I love Chip Zdarsky. I think he can get this one back on track, but I definitely think that the Daredevil run is down because that was a run that was living on Reader Buzz. It hadn't gotten variant buzz. It hasn't gotten any sort of collector buzz, no speculator buzz since Vigil. Um, it is just living on Reader Buzz. Yeah, I know a lot of our viewers are also big on this series. So let us know in the comments, what do you guys think? Is this something that you're kind of eh, looking? I mean, I'm still on board. I agree with the sentiment of like, yeah, it's kind of been there, done that. But still one of my favorite Daredevil runs mm -hmm. I've read so far. I mean, huge Frank Miller. I even like Mark Waits, but this Chip Zdarsky one from that first issue has got me hooked. But we're going to move on to that last one on the three down. And huge Jeff Johns fan. But three jokers seems to be down. Yeah, and I don't know why. Um, I think at the end of the day, we're going to be speculating on this if we're sitting here trying to point our finger. I think you could point on the long delay from like the initial tease of the series to when we finally got it. Um, yeah, like the, the launch of Rebirth. Yeah, because it was like the end of New Fifty Two, right? Yeah, because it feels very Doomsday Clock, right, all over again. We're like. I've sat down and read reread Doomsday Clock. I enjoy Doomsday Clock, but when I was reading it initially, I just didn't. Um, and I think it was the release schedule. This feels like that, but it shouldn't because we're not getting a wonky schedule. We just got issue number one a month ago. Um, so it's more of, I think maybe this just lost the momentum, uh, lost some steam. It's, I'm still very interested in it. And there's another thing. I think James Tynan is kind yeah, of doing I was going to say, I think it's kind of again. getting washed out with the whole Joker war. You've got like two Joker stories going on simultaneously, which we talked about on this show maybe two months ago when we started talking about how hot Joker was right yeah. now, right? And it did add in to, to everything, right? It ramped everything up in the lead up to where we are. Um, it helped, certainly, having all those one shots and all the punch lines creation and everything. But now where we sit, people are really honed in on Joker War. And you're not just getting Joker War in Batman. You're also getting in, in, in Batman ships more frequently than most books. And you're getting it in Detective. And you're getting it in Nightwing and Batgirl. I just think it's taking people's attention. Um, three Jokers may be a sleeper. But they're also going to need some meat in there, man. They're going to need something salacious in this book. We've been led to believe, right, this was going to reveal all mysteries. That needs to kind of happen, or I think this one's going to be a letdown. But uh, lots of covers. Um, just hasn't been necessarily the reception we at all kind of hoped for and expected when this concept was initially talked about. Yeah, I mean, and that's even going further. Like, starting this week, we got Joker Warzone coming out, right? Right. But there it is, guys. There's a three up, three down for this week. Make sure you let us know in the comments. What do you guys think is up? What do you guys think is down? What do you think of this list? I know a lot of people, there's a lot of Daredevil fans. There's a lot of Black Winter fans. There's a lot of Three Joker fans as well. But that's what we see is up and down. Let us know what you see. But that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Men's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. Crashing the pond on the marble floor. Yeah, put up that sign that we love and joy. Yeah, I want more. Yeah, she want more. All the miss works of the flashing lights. She only will hit to a certain song. Her channel is orange, white flannel thong. Come tag along, come tag along. Crash, love, lost.